Okay, so again, 210, 195, 132. So if number one was capital V equals B times H, we would have the base and the height of the triangle are seven and five. So it'd be seven times five divided by two. And the height of the prism would be 12. So that's the problem you should have worked out to get number one. If you have the wrong problem, can you get the right answer? No. no. Okay, for number two, I'm just writing out the problems. You would have had, for number two, base of the triangle was 13 times height of the triangle was 15 divided by two because it's a triangle times the height of the prism, which is two. So that's what you would have had to solve to get that one. Number three, you would have had base times height divided by two times the height of the prism. Okay, so there's the problem you would have had to have. What we are going to do is we're going to have a two problem quiz tomorrow. What do you think the two problems are going to be? One volume and one area. So if you can't figure out where I am getting those numbers, now is the time to ask. Okay, or if you can't get those final answers. No questions about those three? But it's a quiz test, so it's not as a quiz? It's, it's a two-problem quiz, but I'm counting it as a homework grade. It's an in-class homework grade. Okay, because you guys have to know how to do these. And a lot of times when I go over it, you just fix your answers, but you don't figure out why you're missing them. Okay, so no questions over those? Okay, so let's go to the bottom of that page. You had a few more down there, right? Mm -hmm. So number seven, the answer is 448 cubic feet. The formula you would have had to solve, okay, the, it says the base of a prism is a right triangle with legs measuring 16 and 4. What are legs of a triangle? That's actually vocabulary we haven't talked about. Ellie? So if it's a right triangle, it's the two sides that form the right angle are called legs. Does anybody know what the long side of a triangle is called? Big fun word. So on a right triangle, like the two sides that form the right angle are the legs. So like those two are the legs. See how it makes an L, L, legs. The long side is called the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. Okay, so this says the, if the height of the prism is 14, find its volume. So for this one, you would have had to take 16 times 4 divided by 2, because that would have given you the area of the base shape. And then you would have multiplied that answer by 14. Okay. Um, for number 8, you would have had to take 9 times 5 divided by 2 to find the area of the base triangle times 18 to get 405. For the ones where we have calculators, should we do it normally but then check to see if we're right? So, Leo had a good question. When you are using a calculator on the IAR test, the work that you should show should be the same work, okay? If you would typically like write out this, write that out. But then what would you what would you do first if you weren't able to use a calculator, Leo? You'd have to find nine times five. Find nine times five. Hopefully we all know what nine times five is in our head. But take the extra three seconds, type it in. Then your next step would look like this. You would have forty five over two times eighteen. What's the next thing we would type into our calculator? 45 divided by 2, and we would get 22.5 times 18. So you're still doing it step by step. It's just you're using the calculator to do so the math. Don't try. And this is a four-function calculator. This is not a scientific calculator. This stuff.
doesn't do the order of operations for you. Some scientific calculators do, so take it step by step. Don't try and do more than one step in these cheapo calculators. So can you just type that in and then put equal to one, or do you have to like 22.5 times 18 and do a calculator? I would read re 22 times 5, 22.5 times 18. Yes. No, they'll be like the top ones. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it won't be like a word problem. No. Okay, on the back side, flip it over to the back. Surface area requires us to do a little more work. Get my pen. I'm going to come out here to the side. For um, number one, you should have had five sides. How do I find the area of the triangle, Leah? How do I find the area of that first triangle? Okay, so 8 times 12, and then what do I have to do? Divided by 2. So 12 times 8 is 96, divided by 2, 48. So I know two of the sides are 48, because that's my two triangles. So on your work, you should have two of them labeled 48. Then you have to break it into the sides. How do I find the area of that side, Owen? Yep, and I know it's small, sorry. 14 times 10 is 140. How do I, what about the back side, like back here that I can't see? What would it, it would be the same because I can see the 10 and I know if this bottom one's 14, then that one's 14. So I'm going to write equals 140. Now we just got to think about the bottom. The bottom would be 12 by what? 12 by 14. So the last one you do 12 times 14. What's that? 144 plus 24. Yeah, 168 is correct. Then when I add 48 plus 48 plus 140 plus 140 plus 168, we should get that 544. Yeah, and you, like how it's a lot harder to do it. Could you do it like you add 141, 40, add 38, 48. Okay, you like can. 96, 280 plus 160. Yes, yeah, you can add it any way you want. Okay. So that was number one. Number two was harder. What made number two a little bit trickier? Leo? It was like the sides weren't all the same on the triangle. Yeah, the sides weren't, all the rectangles weren't the same, so they were all different. So the only thing that was the same on this one were the two triangles. So for the triangles, you should have taken 12 times 5 divided by 2, which would have given us 30 twice because there's two triangles. Um, one of your rectangles, you should have had 19 times 13. One of them would have been 12 times 19. And the bottom one would have been 5 times 19. What are those answers? What's 19 times 13? 247. And then 19 times 12 is 228. Okay, and then when we add those five numbers together, 630. 630. Okay, do you want me to go over the breakdown of the third one? Yes, no, maybe, yes. Okay, I'll do it over here. Number three still has five sides. I always do the triangle first, base times height divided by two, so... 9 times 14 divided by 2. And here's a trick. What's 4? Looking up here. What's 14 divided by 2? 7. 7. I can kind of cross cancel. I can do that before. If it's all multiply and divide, that works. If there's addition or subtraction in there that doesn't work, what's 9.7? 63. 63. That turns it into more of a mental math problem. Add it in your calculator. Take 9 times 14. And then divide by two. 
So that works, but only if it's what? Multiplication and All multiplication and division. If there's addition in there, that doesn't work. Okay? But how do you know you only have to divide one of those by two then? You won't divide them both by two? Because if you take 9 times 14 and divide it by 2, yeah, you're only dividing one factor by 14. Okay, and again. Um, number th uh, third side, I'm going to do the side I can see. I do 18 times 20, which is 360. The bottom would be 9 times 20, 80. And then the back side that I can't see would be 17 times 20, which is 350, 340, 340. And then when I add them all together, I would get that 1,006. Okay, so really, you have to know how to find the area of triangles and rectangles, and you can find surface area. So, will um, the IAR test, will it have... The I don't know. Sometimes they, they usually have an extended response problem over rectangular prisms. And we're actually going to do one similar to like what I think you will see. And there's usually one triangular prism, either surface area or volume. Usually not both. It's usually one or the other. Okay. Okay. Um, set that aside. Pull out the packet that I gave you. I told you this week we're going to start refocusing our attention on fractions just to refresh what we should already know. Fractions. But the next unit book is dividing fractions. It, it expects you to already have mastered adding, subtracting, multiplying. So we're going to start the next book then? No. We have, we're doing this first. Okay? So on here... I put two pages in one on yours because they start off pretty easy. So find where you see 1 6 plus 2 6. It should be on the front left for you guys. What is my rule for adding fractions, Meyer? Um, you have to add the two bottom numbers to share. Yeah, the bottom numbers have to be the same. If the bottom numbers are the same, we just add the top. So, 1 6 plus 2 6. What's 1 plus 2? 3. 3. So, we would have 3 6. Is that a good final answer? No. How do I reduce fractions? Divide, the, divide, the same number. divide top and bottom by the same thing. So, I divide both of these by 3, and I would get 1 half final answer. Okay, let's look at the next one. Six tenths plus seven tenths. Emmy, can I go ahead and add the numerator? Okay, why? Okay, what's six plus seven? Thirteen, so we have thirteen tenths. Leah, is that a good final answer? What can I do to make it better? Okay, how do I change it to a mixed number? Okay, divide, so the top number goes on the inside. How many times does 10 go into 13? Once. Once. How many is left over? Three. What is my answer? One and three tenths. Dawson, you getting all this? Next one. What is my rule for subtract fractions, Lily? So the denominators have to be the same, and then yes, you just subtract the top. So what's 4 minus 2, Lily? 2, my denominator stays the same. Why do you think subtracting is actually usually easier than adding? Leo? Because like, you won't have a improper fraction. Yeah, it, we have, you have less improper fractions, okay? Because you're going down. Yeah, if you have like 4 and 2 fifths minus something. If you have a mixed number to start, you would get a mixed number to end, possibly. Okay, uh, turn the page. Let's see, I need to go back to my mouse. Next one. Oh, wait, you guys don't turn the page. Sorry. I made yours small. We are adding with different denominators. So if we are adding with different denominators, what do I do? Hallie? 
Yes, I have to get the denominators to be the same thing. Usually it's easier to build them up than break them down, unless you want to work with decimals. Okay, so if I look at the denominator, 6 and 18, asking what's a multiple of both 6 and 18? Let me see if the little one goes into the big one. Does the little one go into the big one here? Yeah, can I turn a 6 into an 18? Yes. By doing what, Jake? How do I turn a 6 into an 18? Times 3. So can I just multiply the denominator by 3? Nope. So I also have to do it to the top. So I'm creating an equivalent problem. I have 3 eighteenths plus 2 eighteenths. Now that my denominator is the same, what do I do, Brennan? You uh, add them together, 3 18 together, 1 18 equals 5 18. 5 18. Can 5 18 be reduced? Nope, so we are finished. Let's go over to the subtraction problem. 3 fourths minus 2 sixths. Dom, what's the number that 4 and 6 both go into? 24. I could use 12. I could use um, 48. Let's do 24 because is it the lowest number that they both go into? No. no, but it works. So let's just go with it. Dom, how do I turn a 4 into a 24? Okay, so I do times 6 times 6 times 4 times 4 on that side. So I'd get 18 24 minus 8 24 So now that the denominators are the same, yes, I can subtract and I would get 10 24 Is that a good final answer? What can I reduce it by, Meyer? Yep, if I divide them both by 2, I would get 5 twelfths. If I would have changed these, and you guys don't have to do it twice. Let me make it bigger so I can change colors here. If I would have changed them both to 12, can I turn a 4 into a 12? Mm -hmm. By doing times 3, I would have got 9 twelfths minus 6 times 2 is 12. Oops, minus 4 twelfths. What's 9 minus 4? Five twelfths. Did I get the same answer? Yeah, it's just if you don't do the least common multiple, which means like the lowest number that they both go into, you'll just have to reduce it at the end, okay? It doesn't matter. You get there no matter what. Now turn the page. Oops. On this page. I want you to circle um, 9 and 10 and 17 and 18 and then flip the page. On this page, I want you to circle four, five, eight, nine. Four, five, eight, nine. Sorry, yeah, the eight's in the circle. This is the first page. Yes. What was it? Nine and ten on the first page? Uh, nine, nine, ten, nine, ten, 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 
If the denominator is 7, what's half of 7? 3.5. So you almost have to do like some mental math or even sometimes work it out to the side. Is 2 bigger than 3.5 or less than 3.5? Less. So would we round 6 and 2 sevenths to 6 or to 7? We would round it to 6. Okay, so you kind of got to walk through that logic for each one that you're so rounding. What if it is... Six and two halves, right? You go up one to the point five. You go yes. So like the next one says one and a half. That's like our point five. If it's a five, do we go up or do we take it down? Up. We go up, so we would round one and a half to two. two. What about three and five eighths? What's half of eight? Four. Four. So if the numerator is four or larger, we have to take it up. Is five bigger than four? Yes, so that one would go up to four. I'm not too worried about estimating. So let's go ahead and flip the page. That page was just in there. I wanted to go over a couple, but I'm not giving you homework over that. Turn to page eight. Okay, the rule for adding and subtracting fractions is you must have a common denominator. On this example, one and one third plus two and a half. First thing I'm going to have you do is line it up vertically. So I'm going to write one and one third plus two and one half in a vertical format. We're on page eight. Do those have a common denominator? No. No, Brennan, what can I make both of those denominators? Six. A six. So I'm going to show that math. How do I turn a three into a six, Dawson? So times two times two. How do I turn a two into a six, Brennan? So times three times three. So I'm showing all of my work. I'm going to write my new problem out here. I have one and two sixths plus 2 and 3 sixths. Start with your fractions. Denominators are the same. What do I do to the numerators? Add them. So I have 5 sixths. What's 1 plus 2? 3. Can 5 sixths be reduced? No. I feel like that's the thing. Most people do that, but then they forget their... Yeah. So final answer. What else? How else? Could I have solved this problem? The way that you guys typically go to, but it actually makes it harder. Oh, when you see mixed numbers, you want to get rid of them. Make them in improper yes, fractions. you. We could have made these into improper fractions. It would have been three. It would have been four thirds plus five halves. We could have got a common denominator. We could have added the numerators, but then we would have had to have take it back to a mixed number. So it's just extra steps that aren't necessary. When you are adding and subtracting, you can work with mixed numbers. When you are multiplying and dividing, you have to get them to improper, okay? But don't do it if you don't have to because there's an extra step where you could potentially mess up. Okay, let's do the next one. 27 and 9 tenths. 27 and 9 tenths, I'm going to write them vertically, 3 and 3 fifths. Leo, do you have a question? Um, for the thing, you can only have to change one, right? Yeah, sometimes you only have to change one. You just have to get them to be the same. So, Owen, what do 5 and 10 both go into? 10. So we're only going to change the bottom one by doing times 2 times 2. I always rewrite because a common error is you'll leave off the whole number. I'm going to shift down a little bit. So I have 27 and 9 tenths plus 3 and 6 tenths. What's 9 plus 6? 15. 15. I'm running out of room down here. I'm going to come out here. So I have 15 tenths. What's 27 plus 3? 30. Is 30 and 15 tenths a good final answer? No. So there's, there's two things we're going to have to do. Okay? Let's look at just the fraction first. Lily, if you had a fraction answer of 15 tenths, what would you need to do to it? A 
Okay? What would that be as a mixed number? Okay, we would get, okay, 1 and 5 tenths, and then she reduced it to 1 and 1 half. So 1 and 5 tenths, which she is saying is 1 and 1 half. Do you guys agree? Yeah, you could have reduced it from the beginning and got 3 over 2 and then changed it to a mixed number. So what is my final answer, Leo? Yeah, because you take the whole number, 30, plus the 1 and 1 half. So final answer would be 31 and 1 half. That next problem, yes? Um, for when you have like 15 tenths, can you regroup your 1 and just have a 5 tenths there? Because then it would be 31 yes. and 5 tenths. Yes, yes. Yep. Look at the next one, 6 plus 5 and 2 thirds. Do we have much work to do for that one? How do we do it? Six plus five. Six plus five. You just add the whole numbers and the fraction stays behind it. So that would just be 11 and two thirds. That's the kind that tends to confuse people. But again, if you think money, if I have six dollars and Ethan has five and two thirds dollars, which sounds funny, and I say, how much money do we have all together? We would have 11 and his two thirds dollars. Um, on this page, just circle these two. I'm just giving you a couple of each kind just to practice. This one? The two next to the 11 and two thirds. Then turn the page to page 11. We're skipping a couple pages. Again, this is all review, so we're just doing a couple. Page 11. Just keep on flipping. Okay, subtracting mixed numbers is a little bit trickier. I am going to pull down the 6, the 6 minus 5 and 2 thirds. I'm going to work it down at the bottom. So I'm going to pull it down here. So I have 6 minus 5 and 2 thirds. I want you guys to copy that down at the bottom like I did. Draw an arrow. We're going to work it down there at the bottom. If this was 6 minus 5.6, which is essentially what it is, what would I have to do? If I have nothing minus 2 thirds, after? Well, we'd have no it were, if we were working with decimals. What would we need to do? If I had zero minus a decimal number, Ellie, you'd have to regroup. You'd have to regroup okay, we can regroup fractions. We just have to take away one whole. So if I take away six, what would I be left with? Five. Now I have to regroup that one whole. Any fraction over itself equals one whole. So I could regroup it as four fourths, five fifths, seven sevenths, ten tenths. Make your life easy. What is what denominator do I want my fraction to have, Brendan? Three thirds. A three. So yes, regroup it as three thirds. But again, you can regroup it as any whole. So th we're going to change six to five and three thirds. Now, can I do my math? Yes. My denominators are the same. What's 3 minus 2? One. 1. My denominator stays the same. What's 5 minus 5? Zero. 0. So my answer is just 1 third. Leo. Um, for this problem, or for any of those problems, you can just make your denominator anything. When you regroup, yeah. Tatum. So what you could, like, really you could just... Like five and two thirds, you could add up two thirds until you get to six. You could, yep. Okay, we're going to work this one. Six and a half minus two and five sixths. So, first, you have to try and get a common denominator. Okay, first, you have to get a common denominator. Ethan, what do two and six both go into? 
12. 12. Could we go lower? Yeah. What else could we do? Two. Does two go into six? Yeah. Let's change them both to six to keep our life simple. So I'm going to do times three times three. I'm just going to draw the squiggly and work down. So I have six and three sixths minus two and five sixths. Can I take three minus five? No. no. So we have to regroup. This is where it gets kind of fuzzy for people. I have to take away one hole. When I take away one hole, I'm left with five holes. But I already have some there. Hallie, what do I do? Well, you would change it so you would like make it six six, but then you would add six with the three. Points. Yeah, so I took away one hole, so I have to add on a hole here to what I already have. And why did you use six six, Hallie? Because that's my common denominator. Okay. So now on top. I'm going to put equals. I have 5 and 9 6 minus 2 and 5 6. Now can I do my math? 9 minus 5 is 4. Good final answer? No. You can reduce it to one-third. Two-thirds. Hold on, we're not done. Close. Page. I'm not page. I want you to circle. And again, these are the ones that are going to give you problems. I want you to circle those, the last two, the nine and three sevenths, and the one that starts with three and seven eighths. Okay. And these are also oh, down here. Yeah, there's like eight problems total. What'd you say? Um, two or three and two thirds. Hey guys, wait, have a seat. Have a seat. Just relax. I promise. We'll get to go to lunch. Yes, because we don't have school on Friday. Okay, so your homework is to do just the problems we circled. I think there were eight, maybe ten. Some of them had common denominators, some of them are a little bit quicker. Leave the calculators on your desk. Your homework is to do the circled problems. And yes, your weekly worksheet is due on Thursday. Okay. Today is Tuesday. Yes. You guys may go. Thank you.